There comes a point in every phonetician's life when you have to learn about voice onset time. The question we have is, when do you talk to your loved ones about making their own VOT continuum? Throughout various stages of development, there are different obstacles that stand in our way. Somewhere in middle adulthood, we finally become ready to take on this task. This video is to help you along. You might recall from the previous video that we made a continuum between deer and tear using the two demo sounds that are available on the GitHub page corresponding to the script. But suppose you're not interested in deer tear and you want to make a new continuum on your own. Well, let's get rid of it. Okay, so suppose we want to make something simple like da to ta. Let's put da in our list. Let's put ta in our list. And let's make the continuum. We'll call up the script. So in this case, I'm going to call up the text file, copy all of it, and paste it into a new prot script window. This is version 31 we're going to run today. Let's run the script. Now, again, just like before, I'm not going to save the files for this time because we're going to talk about saving later, but I am going to keep everything else at the default settings. So, the voiced onset sound is da. I'll continue. It asks for the voiceless onset sound. It's ta. I'll continue. And I'm going to have to select my own landmarks again. So, I'm going to zoom in and select the very onset of that aspiration. And now it asks me for the start of the vowel, or in other words, the end of the aspiration, start of the periodicity. And I'm going to say that's right around here. I'll continue. I'll select my own landmark at the start of the vowel for D. And I'll say it starts right around here. It's going to do a little bit of work. It's done. And now I have a new continuum between DA and TA. Let's take a listen. DA, 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 TA, 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 TA. Sounds pretty good. So this is a pretty simple and common syllable environment to use for any kind of speech continuum, putting an ah after the sound. But there are some things to be cautious about. So for example, if we take a closer look at the frequencies in this sound, for example by limiting the spectrum to showing us everything between 0 and 3000 Hz, one of the things you'll notice across the continuum is that it's not just the duration of the aspiration that's changing. Sure, at the earlier end we have this quick 10 millisecond voice onset time, and at the end we have a 70 millisecond voice onset time. But another thing that changes across this continuum is the formant transition. So for example, if we show the formants, we can see that the first formant climbs up in frequency for DA. It starts at a low frequency around 460 and climbs up to a frequency around 800. Whereas at the ta end, the first formant begins at 800 hertz. So this turns out to be a pretty substantial frequency-based cue, which is not a timing cue. So although we've made a continuum of voice onset time, the listener could actually be making their decision about voicing based on either timing or frequency. So just be cautious about that, that when you're making this continuum, not to be too quick to draw conclusions about which auditory cue was used. We can try to explain this complication between VOT and formant frequencies a little bit by just examining some examples of different stimuli. So let's, for example, take a look at what it means to have a VOT of 10 milliseconds. We think of it as this little blip in the time waveform here, but, you know, speech sounds also have frequency properties. When we change the VOT, we might think of it as extending backwards in time in front of the vowel, but that's not really how voicing works. What happens is that we cut into the vowel and take voicing away from the onset of the syllable. But the syllable has frequency dynamics, so you can see the formant tracks here, and if we cut into that syllable, we're cutting away some of those formant dynamics, or at least rendering them voiceless at the source. So depending on exactly where you cut that time, the onset frequency of the first formant is going to change. So let's go back to this 10 millisecond VOT and look at how this changes as we gradually move across the continuum from 10 
20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and 70 milliseconds, we can see how we've cut away a lot of that formant transition. So if we compare these two side by side, we can see the complication. We can think of VOT as this blip in the time waveform, right, which looks like a timing cue. But we can also see the asymmetry and where the frequency starts for the first formant, as well as the second formant. So maybe it's a frequency cue. Which one is it? Well, if we work with a low vowel like ah, as in a da-ta continuum, we can't really know which cue is active as the person was making their perceptual decision. How do we address this problem? Well, one way is to use the E as a vowel context. So for example, the word deer. If we take a look at the time waveform and the spectrogram, one of the things you'll notice is that the first formant frequency remains steady throughout most of the vowel. So even if we cut back into it, the first formant doesn't change and therefore it can't be used as a perceptual cue. So we can compare deer to tear back and forth again. And what we can conclude is that when we use the eval context, because the frequency cue is not very useful as it was for ah, VOT perception should be primarily temporal in nature. So if you're using a VOT continuum to test the uh, temporal domain of auditory processing, it might be useful to avoid low vowels like ah, to avoid a da-ta continuum, and instead look at a dt continuum. In the next video, we're going to continue looking at some complications of measuring and manipulating VOT by looking not just at the actual aspiration duration and the first formant frequency, but also at the fundamental frequency, which is another covariant cue.